Good morning. Welcome to another online service here at House of Power Outreach. I'm Pastor Tori. Pastor Rita and our senior pastors here at our church, and we'd love to have you see you. We have our in-person service that starts at 10 a.m. Love to see you in person. Uh, I worship with you in person. It's just a tremendous time. I want to uh, thank all of you who partner with us. And those of you, if you desire to partner with us, there's many ways to become a partner with us in, in giving and, and outreach as a whole. And we would just welcome you to be a part of the ministry in that facet. Uh, please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't done so before. As we prepare to get ready, Easter's coming up and Mother's Day's coming, just everything's coming up and just time to just celebrate the Lord with all of our heart, soul, mind, and body. So let's pray and then we're going to enter into the word. Dear Heavenly Father, I just praise you. I thank you, Lord God, for your word. I thank you, Lord, that you have given us above and beyond all that we need to not just survive in this earth, but thrive. And we just thank you, Lord God, for blessing the word today that I decrease, you increase. Give us ears to hear what you have to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're going to talk about the seed, and there's so much about seed and planting. The seed's going to do what the seed is going to do. And, and understand that seed has a calling. And when that calling is, is received, that seed has a destiny and destination, and it will not lie when it is planted. And so we have to make sure that that's where we are. We're given that, that seed the opportunity, the greatest chance of all to do everything everything that God has put it there to do. It's, it's given it a call. It's given it a name and we have to jump in there on it. So the seed has a calling is our message and, and be the ground it can thrive in. So if the seed has a calling and I'm the ground, I want to be a ground that that seed can fulfill its calling. In Genesis chapter 15 and verse one through six, it says, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying, fear not, Abram, I am the shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, uh, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is Eli Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is, is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be in be thy not this shall not be thine heir. But he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the star and, and tell the stars if thou uh, be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. Now, again, great word. That word shows up from God. God's word is so powerful. He speaks that Abraham doesn't have any kids. Who's going to be my heir? He said, look to the stars. Can you even count them? You can't count the stars. There's too many of them. That seed has a calling. His seed that's in his body, that in his beyond years, but is available for God's timing, is God, it has a calling. It's going to get there. That seed is, is going to do what that seed is going to do. And so when we look at this, it's at 99 years old. We, we see this account in Genesis 17 is that he's 99 years old. But the seed has a calling. When you sow into the kingdom of God, it doesn't matter where you are and what it looks like to you because you can't even see it anyway because you're planting it into the ground. Let the seed have its calling, right? The gifts and callings of God without repentance. Now think about it. Do not disrupt the seed. So let's look at Abraham in his life. He says, God, how am I going to be the father of any nation? I don't even have any children. You haven't given me any children. He says, look. Look to the stars. If you can number them, that's how many you're going to have. And so it is that seed takes off. The circumstances may not look your way. Things may not be looking up for you. But as you plant and sow into the kingdom of God, that seed that came from you has a calling back to you. And we'll look at scripture that, that uh, confirms that. So God spoke access to the seed of Abram with his word. And, and made a covenant with him to fulfill it. So now God is speaking. That seed takes off. It's excited. It's moving. There's life given by way of the seed of God. And that's the seed of that seed that comes begins flowing. Now it is dangerous to give in to our limitations and lose the ability to rejoice 
in God's expectation. And that's usually what happens is, is that no one really wants to believe in the fullness of God's word. He says, by stripes you're healed. It's amazing, you know, even in our youth times and youth days, as being youth pastors, we would tell kids and we preach to people, man, avoid the appearance of evil. Stay out of these places. You know, there's behavior going up. Nothing good happens after midnight. Not, you know, you sit here and tell them, stay out of these things. All of that preaching, show the word, go show them in these things. Bad company corrupts good, good people and, and, you know, just, just stay out of these places. And we sell that and then a pandemic comes and the CDC says, don't go to these places. People don't go. The word of God is sitting here telling you to stay away from these things, but a pandemic, the CDC says, oh man, you may kill this earthly body if you go into these places. Now, again, we're telling you, you may, you may be destroying your soul when you go into these places, but this thing had more effect. So you think about it, who are we listening to? Who's really, who really gets the honor? Who really gets the respect when it comes to, uh, serving and what do we serve right and so as we go before god and, and begin to put these things forth then so you can't lose your expectation because you have a limitation and so in fact psalm 65 says you have the spirit of expectancy so there's this thing about god and god is like hey look are we still on are we still doing this are we still about this and, and each and every day no matter what it looks like you say yes god i'm still about this i'm still about this miracle i'm still about this breakthrough i'm still about this financial breakthrough i'm still about this healing i'm still about this restoration i'm still about this peace each and every day rise up with god about that uh, in fact number 23 19 says god is not man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should have to repent if he said he's gonna do it he's going to do it the other part verse 20 gets even more exciting because verse 20 says you are blessed and it can't be reversed he's spoken he blessed you quit trying to reverse it can't be reversed all you can do is kind of become stymied and miss out on what god is doing but you can't reverse what god has blessed he's already put it out there for you whatever you think has been forgotten about whatever you think has been gone it can't be reversed god didn't put that in reverse you just haven't used it i'm gonna pick it up and pick your faith up pick your expectation up about what god has spoken quit looking for a way to say it ain't gonna work quit looking for that and look in god's way so he says it cannot be reversed seeds are honest just like little kids, your seed is honest. You plant your seed somewhere, it's going to do what it's got to do. It's honest. It's going to speak the truth and will stay true to what God created it to do. And it is possible to get stuck in unbelief to the point that we end up sending our seed to live outside of God's will for our life. You can send your seed that is directly from God, what God gave you, and, and you can send it and pour it into other things. You can think about, does God have more access to my seed than the rest of the world? Maybe the seed of time, does God have that? Maybe the seed of your finance, the actual financial seed, does God have that more than the world does? The, the, the seed of your attitude, the seed of your entertainment, where are you going? The seed of your mindset or where, where are you learning? What are you growing in? What are you meditating on? Where's that seed going? Where's the access? Where's the great point of that? So God begins to look at that and say, what are we doing into it? And then are we pouring it to him? Or are we putting it into an outside source? I mean, God wasted seed. We look at here. Here's what Abraham and Sarah begin to do. In Genesis chapter 16 and verse 1 and 2, it says, Now Sarah, Abram's wife, bare him no children. And she had a handmaid, an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. And, and Sarah said unto Abram, um, Behold, now the Lord hath, hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. And it may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarah. Now listen, God didn't tell her to obtain a child through someone else. God said he's going to give him a child through Abraham's bowels and through Sarah's womb. It wasn't going to go by any other means. It, we get dangerous when we try to help God out. When we try to pack it for God, when we try to be something for God. And when God says, just let it do for me, let do it the way I've called you to do it. I made a covenant with you. I'm not trying to break that covenant with you. 
And of course, Abraham agrees. Yeah, you want me to go into your maid? Yeah, this this your idea, right, Sarah? This is something you came up with. Of course, the man ain't turning that down. But you got to understand, he wasn't just given over an extra time to be with someone else. He was given over or accessing his seed into the wrong womb, right? And so God wants us to be in a place. So the best way for God to have his way, we must first quit trying to make our way and quit trying to do it our way. Because again, you get in a place where you shouldn't be doing. Sarah's idea, put the seed under contract when God had already set the seed up under covenant. You can take a covenant thing that God gave you, a pure thing. God gave you a covenant of your body. Here's this goal that says, the Bible says we were bought with a price. Our body is not our own. We were bought with a price. Glorify God with your body. And so it's under covenant. And we can take a covenant thing and put it under contract because of loneliness or whatever it may be and put our bodies in a contract when God had called it to a covenant. He called it to an agreement with him. I bought you with a price. Glorify me with your body instead of satisfying you with your body. You got to think about that. And so he's going that. So, so he called it a covenant. It was the right seed, but in the wrong womb. Man, I, listen, it's not to be too crazy about this whole deal, but you know there are plenty of people out there and say, I put my seed in the wrong womb. I put it in the wrong womb. It was out of order. I did what was out of order. I didn't, I mean, I don't have to go any further with that. You already know how that story turns out. You know that one. And so in the same sense, now God is saying, where are you with the seed of forgiveness? I told you you were forgiven. Why are you still walking around like you planted in guilt? Like you're planted in unforgiveness, like you're planted in unrighteousness. No, the seed that I talk about is a seed that says your sins are as far as the east is from the west. So we begin to look at that. You're not in the wrong womb, but when you operate and act like you're not forgiven and you operate and act like you're not righteousness and you operate and act like your grace is a cover-up instead of your grace is access to the power of God to give you to live outside of the means of this world, then you've got your seed, your life, planted in the wrong womb. And I'm about to give birth to something that God didn't call you to give birth to. And so you look at that, right seed, wrong womb. Prior to this idea, if you think about the way Sarah and them, you go back and read through the chapters, Sarah, uh, uh, idea from Sarah, they were constantly, Sarah was laughing at God, you're going to have a, I'm going to have a child at my age? Really, God? I, I don't think so. I, I just don't. And she, basically, she was mocking God. And so when you go around laughing at what God said to do, or just about doubting it, in a sense of how you live and how you operate. You know, God says, train a child up in a way that they should go, oh, my kid will be all right. I don't have to have them before God all the time. I don't have to pray with them all the time. I don't have to read the word with them all the time. I don't have to train them in that. I can train them in other stuff too. They need to be well-rounded. What they'll become is well lost. And so you have to bring that part of you back to that. Now, if the seed has a calling, the calling must be met, right? With those who see the vision. And see the vision for the seed as it comes forth and as it been as it produces. There's a life in that part. So again, if you are laughing at God or scoffing at God or doubting God, at some point it's gonna come to a place where you act out that laughter the way you are making fun of it. But listen to this in the scripture in Galatians chapter six and verses seven through eight. It says this: Do not be deceived. God is not is not to be mocked. Whatever a man sows, he will reap in return. The one who sows to please his flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. But the one who sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Now, you think about the first verse in verse 7 when he says, God is not to be mocked. And I even said this wrong, I guess even out of just hurriness or whatever. I have always said God is not mocked. It says God is not to be mocked. And not to be mocked, meaning if God says something to you, don't be laughing at it like, God, you can't possibly think you can use me. God say, I can use you. I can use it. I use the 12 disciples. Those were not perfect people. I, you are usable. Quit laughing at what I've called. Quit laughing at the word I've spoken over you. Quit making it look like that you're a circus when I've called you to be a king or a queen. When I've called you to the palace, quit acting like you in a circus. Leave that place. Leave that mentality. And so he says, God is not to be mocked. They were mocking him. 
to the point after a while mocking him so long when something didn't happen, they act on mockery and then they turn that into something that was abortion, uh, abomination where they gave the seed over to a place that wasn't part of the covenant. Now it's got half covenant and half not covenant outside of the will of God. And you think about that birth, Ishmael came out of that. God wants us to grow in the place he called us according to the way he said it shall be done. I always say this, right? The grass is not always green on the side. The grass is greener where you water it. And if God called you to do something, water what God called you to do. Water the behavior that God called you to have in the place that God called you to have it. And, and see what God is doing inside of that and see, watch God get greedy. I know it looks dry. I know it looks flat. I know it looks like nothing is growing, but keep watering it. Keep cultivating it. Keep pouring faith into it and watch and see it on it end up being greener than anything you've ever had, but you have to do your part and pour into it. So quit, uh, no quiet unbelief can lead to ungodly plans that will produce a lookalike, but not what God has called us to live like. Now, that quiet unbelief ultimately leads to plans of doubt and doubtful plans. Like, oh, God, it's, I'm this old. I, I'm, I'm, I've missed my time. I've missed my season. This man was 99. God was talking about having children. His wife was well beyond bearing years according to the world. But just like we talked about when Jesus came out and cursed the, the fig tree for not having fruit, it, it, even though it wasn't in season, it had leaves on it. And, and Jesus expected fruit to be there. He expect us to bear fruit regardless of what the seasons are saying. He said, I am God. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to show you that it's going to be done. And so you look at that part. He calls us to live like God ideas or good ideas are not always God ideas. So you can have a good idea, but it may not be a God idea. It's got to line up with the word of God. So, And it opens the door up to self-idolatry because now we feel guilty because we believe God or we feel uh, bad because we believe God and what we believe God to do didn't happen. So we're going to try to make it happen on our own. We're going to worship ourselves. We're going to worship our opinion. We're going to worship our way instead of letting God have his way. And so we have to go through that part as if without our plan, God couldn't get it done. John 10, 4 says, know the voice of God and the voice of a stranger refuse to listen to. Listen to this in, in John chapter 8, uh, verse 31 through 32. It says this, then said Jesus uh, to those Jews which believed on him. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Listen to this. Now, know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Study the truth and get so ingrained in your heart that you will always be able to spot a lie. The devil's only going to tell you part of the truth. He's going to tell you enough that he know that you know about yourself. And then he's going to embellish it for you to operate. Okay. He did it with Eve in, in the garden. He talked about the tree. Did God really say that you couldn't touch the tree? Well, God didn't say nothing about touching. He said, no, eat from it. But he got her close enough. And then well, ultimately when you get close enough to sin, you ultimately take it in and then it becomes a part of your life. And so he's looking at this and he said that study the truth so you can be able to recognize it. just like a person who studies counterfeit money. They don't study the counterfeit money. They study the real money. And you'll recognize fake when you study real. Be real about what you study. Study the real. And, and Satan will always bring pieces of truth to try and get us to operate in a lie, that is why we must fully obey God, not just the parts we like. And we hear this all the time, like, oh, I don't think God minds if I do this. I don't think God, well, when you become partial, when you become partial, you already set your truth on a bent and then put it in harm's way that you may pick something that is not actually authentic. And God has called us to be authentic and, and pick his word. So it is difficult to know what is wrong if we don't know why it is wrong. Come on now. You got to know that that's why. Here's why this is wrong. Here's why this don't work out. Here's going to be you just because you're bent that way. Here's why this is not what God has called us to do. We're not we're not called to be that way. And so he shakes us and, and, and molds us so that we can live according to the truth that he's spoken. But if you don't even know why. God wouldn't want you in those areas. You don't, you won't know what is wrong. 
Listen to that, and that's part of it. When he says, train our children up in the ways we should go and we'll never depart from it, we got to make sure that we understand that. God wanted Sarah and Abraham to have a baby and they came up with a half truth, but ultimately was a full lie. Half the truth was the seed was coming from Abraham, just like God said, but it was going into the wrong womb, which was a full-blooded lie, right? People say, well, I didn't lie, I just didn't tell you everything, which is still a lie. If you left out information, a part of a story that you should have been telling, that's information should have been there, that's a lie. Because you didn't tell the full story. Just because something grows doesn't always mean it is God. That baby grew in Hagar. Hagar had a baby, but that was not what God's plan was. And there may be people growing all around you outside of God, but it is not God's plan. And you'd rather grow in the plan of God, not just grow just to grow. You'd rather grow in God's plan. So wrap your heart around the word, not just your head. So that when we say God knows our heart, it will be evident in the way we live. I got to wrap my heart around it. I got to wrap, I can't just wrap my head around it. God spoke to me. I got to wrap my heart around it. As long as my heart is wrapped around it, my head will come along in agreement. But if I'm just head wrapped around it, my heart's not in it, I'll know something, but won't be able to do something. And my heart says, here it is. You not only are you going to know it, but you got the heart to do it. You understand to know something or people live less than what they know. And you got to produce and have that heart part and have it heart felt. When we know our ending, we will quit getting stuck in the middle of the circumstances. Praise God. Know your ending. Quit getting stuck in the middle. There's an ending. There's something that you needed to survive and advance in. And so tough times should, uh, tough times should attract surrender for a believer, not quitting. And that is the access to the power of the gospel. Listen to these last set of verses I want to read to you. In Luke chapter 8, verse 11 through 15, it says, Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, and then cometh, and then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy, and these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. This is the seed, the, the, the parable of the seed and the sower. And Jesus is talking about these mindsets. These mindsets, if it's not on the good ground, is going to come up and you're going to be around rocks. And you're going to be around things that are choking you. You're going to be around things that are taking the life out of you. And verse 13 really speaks of the men, my mentality of the body of Christ. They're about the rocks and basically would call the hardheads who hear a word. They receive it with joy. Oh, that's my word. I'm claiming that. That's my 2023. That's my word. That's what I'm going to do. But they don't have no root in them. They have, they have, some, they have some inspiration, but they refuse to walk in the information. And so they're excited about it. And for a little while, for a while, they believe. And then the time of temptation, then they fall away. And then they're no longer falling. God because they didn't get what they wanted, the way they wanted, right? Genesis chapter 8, verse 22 says, as long as the earth remain, it seed time and harvest time will happen. The, it's going to come up. It is going to happen. It's going to grow. You may as well get your ground right, get your heart right, and so it can come up in you the right way so it can thrive and your life can thrive and the seed is there. It has a call. It's going to fulfill its call. And so it may as well be fulfilled in you. Amen. All right, I want you guys to bow your heads. We're going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just praise you. I thank you for this word. Lord, needed it. Due season right here, right now. I take this seed, Lord God, and never rejoice in it. You even do that, Lord God, ahead of time. Even when, even when in infants, Lord God, you said before they got in their mother's womb, you knew them. You, you charged that baby. You charged that seed to go forth, Lord God, and, and have a productive life. So, Lord God, the seeds, the things that you've spoken unto us, it's your word. The seed is the word. That, Lord God, you've spoken of with us. We re-grab those things and cultivate them and water them. And, Lord God, we're going to see your ending on them. In the powerful, mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Pray over you. I believe you're going to have a rejoice and favorable week. In Jesus' name. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.